Hi, welcome back. I'm Scientist Kate. This is Grade 3, Weather and Climate. Lesson 3.7, our final island argument. For today's lesson, you will need a pencil or something to write with and a piece of paper. Are you excited to make our final recommendation to the Wildlife Protection Organization about the orangutan reserve? I am, I can't wait. All right, are you ready? Let's go. All right, welcome back. Today, we will get the final two pieces of information that we requested from the Wildlife Protection Organization. With the table complete, we should have enough evidence to make an argument to support a claim about which island is best for the reserve. Hey, ho, hey. Y'all, I'm so excited. We've been working so hard to get to this point. I, I can't wait any longer. Let's see what the wildlife organization is gonna tell us. Okay, so you remember that in the last episode, we took all of our evidence and we organized it into temperature data and precipitation data. And we decided that in order for evidence to be considered strong evidence towards our claim, it has to be a year's worth of data, right? Like we can't make a decision about where to put the orangutan reserve based off one day of data or one month of data, because we know that temperature and precipitation can change seasonally in some places. And we need a place that is two things all year long. Do you remember what those two things are? Yeah, it has to be hot and rainy all year long in order for the orangutans to be happy and survive there. Okay, so here is the first piece of data that we've gotten back from the Wildlife Protection Organization. This is the total monthly precipitation on Blue Island. Now check it out. What do you notice about this data? Does it look like it's rainy all year long? Or are there rainy and dry seasons? I'll give you a sec to look at the data for yourself. What did you notice? I noticed that there were rainy and dry seasons. I see some months where the rain is like, crazy high, it's like through the roof. But in other months, there's hardly any rain at all, which means it's very dry. Now let's see if we can figure out the range. Remember that the range is a piece of data that tells us what the lowest month is and what the highest month is. I'll give you a sec to try to figure it out for yourself. Okay, here's what I thought the range was. I thought the lowest month in March and April here was about five millimeters of rain. And in September, the highest month, it's about 305 millimeters of rain. Now you may have gotten something close to that. And you may be thinking, how in the world does scientist Kate know exactly how many millimeters that those bars are showing me? Wow, she must be like crazy smart or like, have super mental powers or something. I don't, I estimated, okay? That means that I looked at the bar and I figured out it looks about like this. And that's a really good skill to have when you're reading a graph is being able to estimate. So here's how I did it. To find the, the bottom part of the range, so the small part, I looked at March and April because they look the shortest, right? So I then saw over here on this axis that this space, where this bar lives, it lives in between zero and 100, but it's way, way closer to zero, right? Like it's not way up by 100. So I knew that it couldn't be 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 because those numbers are way too high up, close to 100. I needed a number that was really close down to zero. And so I chose five because that's a small number that's down close to zero. For the 305 part, I went to September, which was the tallest month, and I see that that bar is in between 300 and 400, but it's way closer to 300, which means it's only a little bit more than 300. So I couldn't guess 320 or 380 because those numbers would be too high. The bar is showing me just a little bit more than 300, so I estimated about 305. So when you thought of the range in your own mind, if you had different numbers, but your numbers were close to mine, that's okay. That doesn't mean that your range is wrong. We just estimated a little differently. 
Great. Now let's do the same thing for the second piece of data from the Wildlife Protection Organization. This is the monthly total precipitation for Creek Island. Take a look at it and decide. Do you think there are rainy and dry seasons? It looks to me like there are. We see that in June, July, August, and September, there's more rain than the other months. But it's definitely not as big of a difference as we see in Blue Island. In Blue Island, there are some really rainy months and some really dry months. And in Creek Island, there are some months that have less rain and some months that have more rain, but um, definitely rainy and dry seasons in both of these places. Now, let's practice trying to find the range one more time. Go ahead and see if you can find the lowest number and the highest number and estimate what the range is. Okay, here's how I estimated the range. I said it was about 75 millimeters to about 180 millimeters. So to do that, I went to the shortest month, which was November, it had the least amount of rain. And I saw that the bar was in between zero and 100, but it's way more than the last time we estimated. It's way past zero. And I would say it's even past halfway. I know that half of 100 is 50, so I know that it must be more than 50, but it's not so close up to 100 that, you know, it could be like 90 or something. So I estimated about 75. Do you agree with my estimation? Great. Now for the 180, the tallest month was August. I see that the bar goes up to right here. That's in between 100 and 200. So I know it's more than 100, and it looks like even more than 150, which would be in the middle. So I estimated that it was about 180. Does that make sense? Great. Okay, so we have the two pieces of data that complete the table. Are you ready to plop them in? Let's do it. There they are. Y'all, we have a complete table that is going to help us make our claim. Yeehaw! This is very exciting for me. Okay, now, taking a look at this, I want you to just scan your eyes down the temperature data part of the table and just compare. Look at Arc Island's temperature and Blue Island's temperature and Creek Island's temperature. All right, now, look at the precipitation data we have for the three islands. We have Arc Island's precipitation, Blue Island's precipitation, and Creek Island's precipitation. We're looking for an island that is both hot and rainy all year. So I'm gonna be quiet for a second, and I'm just gonna let you analyze the graphs. Go for it. Do you have any initial ideas here about which island might be the best? If you do, great. If you're still a little confused and you're not 100% sure, that's okay too. Let's take a look at the different claims that we can choose. The question we're trying to answer is, over many years, which island's weather will be most like the weather where orangutans live, which remember is hot and rainy all year. Claim A says that over many years, Arc Island's weather will be most like the weather where orangutans live. Claim B says that over many years, Blue Island's weather will be the most like the weather where orangutans live. And claim C says that over many years, Creek Island's weather will be most like the weather where orangutans live. I just noticed something. Claim A is for Arc Island, which starts with A. Claim B is for Blue Island, which starts with B. Claim C starts or is about Creek Island, which starts with C. So that's how we can remember in our minds. Claim A, Arc, claim B, Blue, claim C, Creek. Okay, great. Now let's go back to the data. Which claim, A, B, or C, or do you wanna pick? 
maybe you already have a claim in your mind and you're like, I know this scientist, Kate. I know exactly which island I'm going to pick based on the evidence. And some of you are still like, hmm, I don't know. I'm still not 100% sure. So let's use process of elimination. Let's start with temperature data. Okay, so we're going to start with that first column next to the pictures. What do you notice about the temperature evidence on Ark Island? Does this look like it's hot all year? Or does it look like there are changes in the seasons and the temperatures where there's like a hot season and a cold season? Yeah, it's hot all year. We see those bars are very high and across the way it's hot. Great, so Ark Island could be the island that we choose. Blue Island, take a look at its uh, temperature across the year. Is it hot all year or are there hot and cold seasons? Yeah, Blue Island is also hot all year. Great, maybe Blue Island is the island we choose. Now, take a look at Creek Island. Is it hot all year or do we see changes in the temperature across the seasons? Yeah, there's some hot months and there's some cold months. So what does that mean? That means that Creek Island cannot be the island we choose. The orangutans need heat all year long. So I think we should just go ahead and eliminate Creek Island. Ready? There we go. I got rid of Creek Island and now we can just focus on Ark and Blue Island. We know they both have the temperature all year that we need. So now we have to compare what? Yeah, we have to compare their precipitation and we're looking for a place that is rainy all year long. So let's take a look. Look at the precipitation data for Ark Island. Does it look like it's rainy a lot during the year or does it look like there are changes in the seasons? Yeah, it's rainy all year. Those bars are high for every single month. Now, if we look really close here at January, January is really high and so are November and December. So there are some changes, but over all of the months, do you see any months that are really low? No. So we know that every single month of the year, we can expect high levels of rain. What about Blue Island? What do you notice about its precipitation? Yeah, we talked about this earlier. There's definitely a dry season down here, and there's a really heavily rainy season during this part of, during the part of the year where it's warm. So what does that mean? That means that it cannot be Blue Island. Friends, have we done it? Have we used the process of elimination by comparing and analyzing data to make an evidence-based decision to support a claim? I think we have. So which island is it that we should recommend to the Wildlife Protection Organization? It's Ark Island. I think this calls for a celebration. We figured it out. All right, that's enough. <laughs> when we first started learning about the islands, we had evidence that Blue Island had weather most like the weather where orangutans live. Like we decided based on those one individual days of data that Blue Island was a good fit. But then later we changed our claim and we decided that Creek Island had weather that was more similar to the weather where orangutans live. That's because scientists change their claims when they get new information and that's allowed. Now we know that Ark Island is the best island for the orangutan reserve. We know that because we have evidence, y'all, and scientists must have evidence to make good, strong claims. Now remember, we're going to be making a scientific argument. And the purpose of a scientific argument is to, you ready to choose? Pop quiz. Is it to make other scientists feel bad? Or is it to convince people that a claim is true? Why do scientists make arguments? Hmm. 
Yeah, it's to convince people that a claim is true. It's not to make other scientists feel bad. You may think of an argument as being something mean and like two people fighting with each other, but that's not what a scientific argument is. In a scientific argument, a scientist is just using um, all the evidence that they can gather to convince people that a claim is true. So a convincing argument must have which of the following? This is a very hard question. It must have cupcakes. It must have strong evidence and or it must have glitter. Which of those three things must a convincing argument have? Yeah, it must have strong evidence. Cupcakes and glitter are great, but they do not help scientists make strong arguments. So now that we've remembered these things, are you ready to write a scientific argument? I know you are. You are so prepared and you're so ready. So look at the part up here in orange. The question we've been trying to answer that you've heard over and over again is over many years, which island's weather will be most like the weather where orangutans live? So I've set up an outline here to help you write your argument. You always wanna start your argument with the claim. And the claim is like what we're trying to get people to hear and believe from us right now. So over many years, blank island's weather is the most like the place where orangutans live now. What did we decide the answer is? Yeah, Ark Island. This is the claim. So we're stating what we believe right from the beginning. We're not gonna play any games. We're gonna say Ark Island is the best place for the reserve. So that's how you should start your argument. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what to write for the rest of your argument, but here are some things you should include. You should definitely use evidence about temperature and precipitation to support the claim. You should also use evidence to explain why the other two islands are not suitable. And then you should end with a recommendation to the Wildlife Protection Organization. So you're basically just going to wrap up your argument by saying, again, Ark Island, we believe, based on the evidence, is the best place for the orangutan reserve, and we recommend that you build it there. Okay? To help you, here's the data again, because you're going to need this evidence to help you write your argument. You should pause the video here, write your argument, and then unpause the video when you're ready to keep going. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Bye. All right, welcome back. Did you write your final argument? You should definitely talk to your teacher because they may want you to turn it into them or they may wanna have a class discussion or a group discussion about everybody's final arguments. The other thing you can do is go find somebody else in your house, show them the data, and ask them to read your argument and see if your argument makes sense based on the data. They'll be so impressed with how you analyzed data and wrote a scientific argument because those are really difficult and important skills for scientists to have. So you will blow people's socks off at how hard a worker you are and what a great scientist you are. So I hope you share your findings with the people who live in your house. Okay, that's it for lesson 3.7, our final island argument. It's been great to work with you all through this mystery and trying to solve the problem of where to put the reserve. And I'm so excited we found the answer today. I hope to see you in the future in another science unit. Until then, adios, goodbye.